the Jeff Collins era at Georgia Tech wasn't exactly a great one. In fact, from the beginning, people had questions about whether or not he should even be there. Now he is out, and they are once again looking for a head coach. We were taking a look at five head coaches uh, – candidates that I really like and what they each bring to the table. Okay, well, let's get the first one out of the way. Deion Sanders, the Jackson State head coach who has plenty of personality, plenty of ability to bring a lot of talent to a program, especially one like Jackson State. I think that he would be a good fit with Georgia Tech. I think that his experience when he was playing there in the Atlanta area is huge. I think that he is a natural draw to any program that he's going to coach. I don't think it matters where he goes. He is going to bring players to that program. He's bringing four and five star kids to Jackson State. He just signed the number one player in Travis Hunter. So there's no questioning that he can bring talent to wherever he goes. He has the brand recognition, the name recognition. And I think honestly, he would be a good hire for Georgia Tech. I think if you're looking to completely shake things up and bring someone that's going to bring a lot of excitement to the program, Deion Sanders has to be at least on your list, if not near the top, and calling him because you look at what he's done in Jackson State, 18 and five in his career. He's three and oh right now this season. I think that's someone that is going to be high on a lot of people's lists. And with the connections that he has and his ability to recruit top tier talent, I don't see why he's not going to be on the list. I know there are some people that don't think he'd be a good fit, but right now Georgia Tech needs everything that they can get in terms of coaching and, and going in the right direction. And Deion Sanders will be a great way to get that started. Jimmy Chadwell is my next candidate. I think that he could be a, a good fit for this job. Maybe not necessarily because he has any connections to the program, but when you look at what he's done at Coastal Carolina in 2017, when they joined the FBS levels, it was going to be difficult to transition. And not only has he made that transition speed up, he is thriving with this team. The Chanticleers are currently sitting at 4-0 this year. He has a 34-19 record since 2017. In 2017, they were 3-9. And, and just two years later, they won 11 games. In fact, they've won 26 games in the last three years. And this season isn't over. This is a guy who knows how to win. And in a, in a fitting way, almost, he is going to bring back a, a unique offense to Georgia Tech. You know, it, we knew Georgia Tech has this triple option team under Powell Johnson. And with Jamie Chadwell, who doesn't run triple option, he runs this RPO offense that is unique to college football. It's a combination of kind of that spread uh, almost like that wishbone kind of offense too, but the modern version of it, he brings a unique offense. He's a winner who knows how to pr produce points and he knows how to get the talent to work for him. And now you just give him a bigger budget, the ability to recruit four and five star kids to stay in the state of, of Georgia and not just in Georgia at Georgia uh, with the Bulldogs. You're going to get them to come to the Yellow Jackets. I think that he is going to be high on a lot of people's list after this year, especially if what he's doing right now continues now the next few this is the, the interesting part these are just three that i think are, are have the potential to be good fits it's just a matter of will they get the call willie fritz isn't necessarily the highest on anybody's list but the fact that he has been overachieving at tulane he's been able to build something at tulane tells you a lot about what he can do as a coach now if you give him a chance to work with better talent that I think that maybe you're going to look at something special. Now he does have some familiarity working in the state of Georgia after he's coaching Georgia Southern. He has those ties. So that's something to keep in mind. Again, probably not the highest on everybody's list or even on their list, but it's someone I think that they're definitely going to at least consider because he has the ties. He's no, he knows how to build a program. He knows how to create them into winners. I mean, Tulane just beat Kansas state who beat Oklahoma this past weekend. So it's not like they're not able to compete with other teams that are above them. That's something to keep in mind. I just think that there are other candidates maybe that are going to be ahead of them, ahead of him, and it's going to be tough to see him high on the list. But, you know, weird things happen. I think that with the number of openings that we're going to see, Guys are going to go to other schools, which means that teams are going to have to move down to three, four, or five in terms of their options. Willie Fritz might be down there in the middle of the list, but he'd still be a decent fit if Georgia Tech is able to get him. Tom Herman's tenure at 
Texas did not go well. It did not end well and ended up getting him fired. However, his tenure at Houston has a lot of similarities with this Georgia Tech situation. This is a program that is in a city full of talent. Houston was the same way. It's a, a city full of talent, and Tom Hermoon was able to capitalize on. He was able to build H-Town takeover, and that resulted in a really good tenure for the Houston Cougars. And that got him the job at Texas, but that's what I want to focus on. Tom Herman knows how to capitalize on a good market. He knows how to, especially, an, I should say, an underdog market, because obviously Austin, it was a market that he wasn't able to produce on the field. But he's able to recruit. He's able to build a program and build guys on the fact that he can build a brand and make this program into something. I think that he's definitely going to get a look by Georgia tech. He has power five experience. He has experience building a program in a city that's full of talent. And it's, with Georgia Tech being where it is, there's no shortage of talent. You don't have to go very far to get good players. And I think Tom Herman knows exactly how to get those guys to campus, and that would help them turn things around really quick. Now, people are going to throw names like Jeff Lebby, uh, Josh Gaddis, Dan Mullen, and Jeff Munkin. You can throw all those names out there. And honestly, the part of this video, I only want to do five so we could have some sort of discussion about who people think is going to be the right guy for the job. One guy, and it's not going well this year, but if he turns this around, Sean Elliott could be a really good candidate for Georgia Tech. And here, let me explain why. Sean Elliott has done a really good job of getting Georgia State, of all teams, of all programs, to be a decent Georgia, Georgia State to be a decent Sun Belt team. This is a program that when he took over, it went seven and five, dropped down to two and ten. And since then, he's had three winning seasons in a row. Georgia State, have you ever heard? Most people haven't even heard of Georgia State or any players from there. So, this is a program that he has done a phenomenal job of building up in the city of Atlanta, too. Keep that in mind. He knows this city, he knows how to get talent to be able to produce talent and, and develop it, too. So, now you're talking about a guy who's familiar with the area. He knows how to turn a program around and it's in the same city as the one that he would be hired for. I think that if, again, an 0-4 start, not ideal. That's that's one thing. We'll get that out of the way. I understand that. However, I think that if they turn things around this season, because let's be honest, their, their schedule so far has not been forgiving. So we'll give them a little slack with that. But if he's able to turn this around, make a bowl game, even seven and five, six and six, then I think that Georgia Tech has to give him a look because he knows the area. He knows how to get the talent to stay in the area or at least come to the area. And he knows how to build that kind of a program. He knows how to build a brand. And given what he's working with right now, the resources that he'd have at Georgia Tech would be infinitely better. This is just my five here. There are so many names right now because it's so early in the season that could be considered. And it just comes down to whether or not who's going to get a shot and who Georgia Tech really likes for the job. There's a lot of candidates that I really like for this job. And I'm surprised when I put this list together. I think you're looking at guys like Dion and Sean Elliott and even Tom Herman. There's a lot of similarities to either their current jobs or former jobs that would make them good fits. There's other guys that are just really good football coaches that I, again, would deserve an another chance so it's going to be really interesting to see how this one plays out it's disappointing that the jeff collins era didn't work out it really wasn't surprising to some of us including myself but i think that georgia tech has the chance to rebuild something maybe even push them back to because remember when they were battling with clemson back in the day for the acc championship those were fun games and if georgia tech can get back to that and I think that that fan base is really going to love what happens. That It's going to be a program that is buzzing. And it really just comes down to who's going to be that coach that's going to bring them there.